Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Link. And I'm Rhett. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we, as a duo, will be discussing other duos because, hey man, we're experts on being a duo. We've got experience with being connected by an ampersand. And that might be a real duo, it might be a fictitious duo, it might be a duo, and I mean, I, you spent some well, time we've actually categorizing them. And you, like, you know, I see the twinkle in your eye when you're categorizing things. It feels good to I feel things like, in groups. I feel like every day when you get here, I should have like a, like a, not a big bag, but like a small bag, a lunch bag size of different color Legos, and just like drop them in front of you and you'll be like, <laughs> I'm not like a dog that you've got to like buy toys to keep them occupied so they get tired. Have you seen one of those? Do you ever give your dogs one of those like puzzle toys where they, you put food in and they have to like figure no. out how to do My it? My dogs don't have. I mean, Jasper has a I lot think of energy. They but might surprise you. I mean, we did it for a little I, bit. With Barbara. I should try it with Jasper, but I've never. Jade, it's not a candidate for that. But Barbara seemed like she got mad at us. She was frustrated. She would do it, but then she would look at us like. But why? Yeah, I know how she feels. She's like, that's you realize the you just made. You could have just given me that, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I could, and I will. Here you go, princess. I have taken Jamie's list of duos, which we will respond to, and all I've really done is kind of put them into categories, so we can kind of stay in a zone at a time. Music. Now we're gonna rank them. I'm gonna Not say. Let me say the categories. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Music, fictional, historical, comedy. Mm. And other slash catch all. We're not really doing lovers. We get to it. Lovers are not really duos. No. They, I mean, they are, but they're not the kind of duos no, that we're talking couples. about. Right, they're couples. A couple is not a duo. Yeah. I mean, unless. Well, sometimes they are. Um, uh, Sonny and Cher. There are a few exceptions. Yeah. Um, so I want to let's get into the music of it all. The first one is the Everly Brothers. Now, you're a fan of the Everly Brothers, Phil and Don. American rock duo, their first hit in 1957, Bye Bye Love. Now before we, hold on. Originally rejected by 30 other acts. Uh, now before we lose you, before we lose you, don't start, don't start fast forwarding. Oh gosh, who are the Everly, Everly brothers? brothers? If you don't know, so you should know. The Everly Brothers have been really meaningful to us. Uh, so they were very meaningful to me as a child because in the not so large stack of records that my parents gave me when I was a kid that I kept in my room. The Everly Brothers uh, was one of the albums. And boy, I just, I loved their music, right? And I didn't really yeah. understand what harmony was. I just knew that I liked the vibe. They basically sang close harmony the entire time. Every, yeah, every lyric, every, every, every piece you know, of the song. And when we started Really getting into a groove of how we like to write, it was it was very much that right to the point where sometimes when we would get input from others, they'd be like, "Why don't you Why don't you think about singing like you take a verse, you take a verse?" It took a long time once we were writing songs, comedy songs for YouTube, to kind of branch out and kind of split apart, right? Which is a nice little asset. Well, they set the standard for this. Oh yeah, they I really mean, set it. What, what's your favorite Everly Brothers song? I mean, I don't know. It's definitely dream. Not, it's not Bye Bye Love. Dream. I, I, I think um, dream, that's, dream. Dream is it? That's the best one. What about Kathy's Clown? Such it's a bit An of a, interesting. It's a bit of weird. It's a weird yeah. song, but I do like it. Um, you should listen to the Everly Brothers if you want to know what close harmony sounds like, and also realize that. They were so. They kind of were making it. They were inventing it in some so sense. So right? influential. Um, speaking of which, another iconic musical duo pretended to be them before they became popular. Lennon and McCartney. And, yeah. And Lennon the and Beatles. McCartney is a bit of an interesting categorization as a duo because obviously they were, they're known in the context of the Beatles, but they were sort of the core creative force in that. Yeah, because you, I mean, and because you know, it's like you'll say Lennon and McCartney. You'll just say it. You put it together. I say you, it all the time. You know which order it goes in. Nobody says McCartney and Lennon, and so it's linked with an and. And to me, that's a good test of 
the iconicness of a duo is if you know how to say it and you know what order it's in. Mm, good Every, point. You know, good point. And and it just rolls off the tongue. So even though they were part of a larger band, like childhood friends, they agreed when they were writing their songs, like crediting their songs that no matter who wrote the song and who contributed, sometimes only one of them contributed, they still credit it as Lennon McCartney for the longest time. That was their agreement. Really? Yeah, just like a blanket agreement. That's what they did. So they were like, they really duoed themselves. And you know what? That I mean, that's what we did. We had a conversation very early when we were trying to make this work. It was like, you know what? We're we're building this as a duo. We're not trying to do other things. It's like now you have the luxury now of we have the luxury of um, being able to branch out and do things if we want to because we've established the duo ness to the point where there's not you know it's 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 firmly established that ampersand is going to be there. And it's like, oh, it's rep from Rent and Link. It's Link from Rent and Link, you know? It's, uh, you know, the uh, the Beatles broke up. They had amazing uh, careers. Paul still does. But he still talks about John all the time. He still talks about the Beatles all the time. You know, he's still... Paul McCartney from the Beatles. Are are you are you? Uh, and we're not gonna. Maybe maybe we will for some of these duos. We did it recently on a Good Mythical More, where we're like, who's the who and the which one of us is who in a duo. We might do that if it naturally occurs. But yeah, are you not which one are you? But who do you like more? Like you know, everybody's got a favorite, right? Paul. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Just musically. Well, yeah. Well, I I like the. I like the Paul songs a lot more than the John songs. You know, and there's the whole Yoko Ono thing that, you know, a lot of people really feel like that um, from a musical perspective really took John in some interesting directions. He also died at some point, you know, so he didn't have quite the longevity. But have you seen A Hard Day's Night? I haven't. So I watched, I didn't finish it, I'll be honest with you, uh, I was in a mood to be like, I want to watch something weird. This is like during Beatles mania, they made this movie. 1964. It's kind of cr crazy that in the middle of Beatlemania, they decided to do this documentary, not documentary, movie. And it, they're playing it, themselves, right? Playing themselves. And it's, there's, a, you know, it's a, it's based on the, the things that are true about the Beatles and the fact that they they're all playing themselves and they are a band and they're try and they're on tour or whatever, but it's about they had lines. There was a story. It wasn't presented oh, as a document. Yeah, and I think that it will make you think differently about all of them, and but especially John because I always thought well his what his sense of humor that he was the serious one. He's got no. I I know about his sense of humor because I watched the like the eighty hour documentary. That Get Peter, back. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. I, I, I didn't together. watch that. So. And he, like even with all the tension that you could cut with a knife, he was like constantly like doing voices and being totally kooky. Well, here's the thing, I, and I think this is where what a weirdo. I, I mean, like in the best way. I think that some people, I love it, if they humor. were trying to like. If they were doing the thing that I don't want to do and like track me and you onto a, a, a duo, they might be like, oh, Link's McCartney because he seems like more happy-go-lucky, whatever. If you watch A Hard Day's Night, the choices that Lennon makes that are just complete head scratchers. <laughs> He's, yeah. Makes you Lennon. He, oh, really? Oh, yeah. I, it's wacky. I, okay, I got it. It's just... It. It's, well, I kind of want to be Ringo. No, I mean, he, he, he seems the happiest. He does some things. I just want to be Ringo happy. Again, I only got through like a third of this movie, but I'm just saying there Poor are some George. choices that he <laughs> made. Poor George. Nobody wants to be George. There are choices that he made that are just like, this is... Wacky. This is just weird. This choice is <laughs> just... This choice was just for him. <laughs> Man, I'd love to meet so I, Paul, I, though. So I ended up kind of like, you know, I was like, oh, I, you know, he gets a re reputation, and I'm not, I, I, I like the Beatles, and it's the kind of thing where 
when I listen to them, I'm like, oh man, I just forget how good this music is, how innovative it was, and how I just love the arrangements, I love the melodies, I love the choices, and then, but I never find myself being like, well, I'm gonna listen to the Beatles right now. Yeah, it just gotta, I don't know what it is. You gotta go on a, you gotta go on a kick. Yeah. I don't know what it is. If when you listen to it, it's great, but then you don't find your, I don't find myself being drawn back to it. But I, so I didn't have a proper opinion about about Lennon, but I'm just saying he's he's kooky, man. He was kooky, he's yeah. now dead, he was shot. He was also very principled. Um, I'll, I'll throw into this Everly Brothers mix just as influential and another iconic music duo that you have to mention, Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah. Um, were heavily influenced. I mean, they were basically Everly Brothers impersonators at the beginning. Like if you listen to their first album, the 3 a.m., whatever it is, I mean, they're just impersonating the Everly Brothers. That's how they started, period. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I'm actually putting the Everly Brothers, even though there's no ampersand, above Lennon and McCartney and above Simon and Garfunkel. Uh, and they're just so tied to each other. You know, Paul Simon obviously ended up doing his own thing for a longer period of time. And I, I again, I, I don't know much, I'm sure you know more about the music history of this thing, but like my impression is that uh, Paul Simon I don't know if Garfunkel was as well, but like, it diffi diffi this is, these are difficult people. To, to, I mean, they had a difficult relationship. Difficult people to remain in duos for a, for a long period of time. Yeah, um, I, I feel for him. And, and Paul Simon was just such a musical genius in terms of as a songwriter. And I mean, it, it's easy to kind of give Garfunkel short shrift. So I find myself compensating for that and really liking the Garfunkel songs. Um, because he was just more of well, like name a one harmony of guy. Um, like, well, Bridge Over Troubled Water is like the most famous, but that's a Paul Simon song that, like, he just are you saying he gave how, Garfunkel? You're saying sing. whoever wrote it is you're saying you're, you're you're saying that there are Simon written songs and Garfunkel written songs. No, I'm talking about like Who's more of, more of like the lead, like where Garfunkel is not just kind of singing the harmony, which I mean makes me throw out Hall and Oates. You got that ampersand, even though technically they say that they never call themselves Hall and Oates. It was always Daryl Hall and John Oates. Like that is the official name of their band. And if you look at most all of their albums, it actually says their full names. Like they do not refer to themselves and never did as Hall and Oates. Now you urinated next to Daryl Hall at one point. Tell me about that. In the airport? <laughs> yeah. And then I followed him trying to work up the gumption to say something, and it's, I never did. Hey man, I just peed next to you. Biggest, mis just biggest regret of my life. Uh, well, I'm glad you didn't say anything while you were peeing, because listen, I'm no Daryl Hall, but I have been recognized from time to time, and I have had people peeing next to me. You don't want anybody talking to you a while you're spilling your oats. And I'm a nice guy, so I didn't say, hey bro, let's wait until this is over. But. Um, I knew I wasn't gonna talk to him at the urinal. I didn't. I, yeah, I just stalked him a little bit. Hall and Oates, interesting, right. interesting case. And also, we'll talk about Brooks and Dunn in a second. But mm, not an ampersand, but an mmm. Yeah, right. Which we should have done that. Rhett and Link would have ampersand. We, we missed an opportunity there. Right. Mm. <coughs> mm. But in both of these cases, um, I don't know. Garfunkel and Oates, you mean? No, no. Brooks and Dunn and Which Hall is and another iconic. Musical comedy duo. I don't know exactly what the responsibility breakdown was in terms of the creative process for these guys, but the the final package, the performance package, right? Yeah, Oates kind of disappears, and a little uh, ba back up, and Brooks disappears. Yeah, kick. Well, he does a, he, he does a lot to make up for di disappearing in the like the mix of things by. Hip waggling, Move, moving around a par lot, partying it up. He, we, it's a, he's very fun to watch. But like, like when wearing you the cowboy hat. But when you think about Brooks and Dunn, you're hearing Ronnie Dunn, except for a few few songs. You know, they, they were uh, an arranged duo. Yeah, they both had solo careers for years. They were both writing for other people. Kicks Brooks writes a lot of music as well as Ronnie Dunn. But they were they were put together because it just wasn't clicking for either one of them as solo artists. And you know, it's like Ronnie's got this amazing voice, he had amazing songs, and then you got Kix Brooks who's got the look. 
He had the cowboy look. He had yeah. the big mustache. Has a little legitimacy and the, to and it. And the big hat. And like Ronnie had like the bouffant hair and right. he was kind of he was a little bit prettier. You well, know, so, some Vince Gill sort of yeah, energy. energy. Yeah. With a with a bit more belt a beltier voice. I mean, they're but they are both great. You know, I just have this sense of like, oh, you're great, I'm great, we're both great, kind of thing that I want to say. But like, it it just it just felt like a it's a marketing ploy that worked. And then, you know, the 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 songs they brought to the table, it just continued working. So I do like it, but because it's not an even, it's not perceived as an even partnership. I got I got to put it a little bit lower on the list. I'll throw out the White Stripes, brother sister duo. But then you got Jack White, who's known for so many things. And it's like when you say Jack White, you don't have to say Meg at the same time. Yeah. You don't have to. So I mean that a duo that, only is only going to get to the top of the list if they're you, equal. You only think about them and you think about them primarily in the context of the duo. Yeah, which is not the case with Jack White. Now Brooks and Dunn. I mean. You can't separate the words. Yeah. But you know, they're not they're not they don't see, the perception is different. Sonny and Cher, same thing. You, you, I mean Cher obviously you can separate the words. So that doesn't work. But I'm going to throw out one more that I think is the only one that can rival the Everly Brothers. Okay. And again, I cuz I I want I don't want it to be the Everly Brothers cuz there's no ampersand. And they're brothers. So it's kind of like there's the blood thing, and I kind of like it when they put people together who are who are thicker than thieves and closer than brothers and connected with an ampersand. Of course, the, the, my next suggestion doesn't have that either. Outcast, out and cast, out and cast, <laughs> outcast, man. Big boy Andre three thousand. I mean, Andre is always listed as one of the greatest MCs of all time. Uh, and but you really can't give big boy short shrift, and they complement each other so well. They do, and they hold. They each hold their weight, and together, they made so, they made something amazing. They again did again and again and again. They did. I completely agree with you. I think the thing that makes it difficult to put them above the Everly Brothers is again the you know Andre three thousand is like he's like a fashion icon and like. His, right. his like his voice was like super uh, distinct distinct and so i think when you have to know sort of the bts when you have to kind of understand what makes big boy great yeah from like an educational standpoint which i completely agree with but yeah. then just like the popular perception is like oh yeah that guy from outcast that's sometimes yeah. acts it makes it. I mean, it's just. It's a. It's an unfortunate th way that people just try to distill a duo down to these parts. You know. Yeah. All right. So but you. But you. Because you can't do that with the Everly Brothers. I. I wouldn't have no. even been able to tell you that they didn't even one, sing separate. Who's Phil and who's Don? When the duo is so inextricable. intertwined, inextricable. Yeah. That makes a. That that makes them the best duo in this musical uh, duo battle. Yeah. Yeah, all right, I'll give it I'll give it to you. Just want to remind you, Good Mythical Evening's coming up. This is where we do a, a not safe for work version of Good Mythical Morning. It is streamed live on the internet, but you gotta buy a ticket. Uh, you can go to goodmythicalevening.com. So we go live August 24th at 10 p.m. Eastern. That's a Thursday night, 7 p.m. Pacific. Goodmythicalevening.com. It's gonna be wild. Man. And listen, it's gonna, um, be, it's gonna be it's it's pleasure and pain. You 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 will be making the decision That's the throughout the night as to whether or not one or both of us will experience pain and pleasure. It's interactive. It's interactive, okay? So yeah. so yeah, you know, you're gonna be able to watch it after the fact, sure, on demand, whatever. But the only way to experience it is in the moment. So I'll be there. Clear your schedule, I'll be there. You know I will be inebriated. Get your ticket, make it happen, we're bringing it. We're bringing it to you. Uh, another quick thing we want to ask you to do is rate and review this podcast, Ear Biscuits, wherever you're listening. You know, if that's on Apple, you can leave stars and you can leave words, and they take that stuff into account. Yeah. So we haven't talked about it in a while. Um, Spotify, um, you can leave a rating too. It, it's all helpful. The algorithms, you know. Um, 
So we need to signal to the algorithms that you like this. And you know, so I, thank you for doing that. As you listen to an episode that's about a particular thing and you're like, oh, you know what? I think that this person would connect with this particular person episode share it with them give it a little share you know that means that means a lot that does a lot it does a lot ear biscuits is supported by chime you may think a credit score is no big deal but if you're dealing with a low credit score or no credit score at all that could be a problem for your future financial goals that's why millions of people swear by chimes secured credit builder visa credit card credit builder is just a better way to build credit you build your credit score safely with everyday purchases and on-time payments. There are no annual fees, interest, or credit checks to apply. You can use it everywhere Visa credit cards are accepted and build credit using your own money. And with a Chime checking account, you can get paid up to two days earlier with a qualified direct deposit with fee-free overdraft up to $200. If you sign up for SpotMe, Chime will spot you up to your limit when you make a purchase that exceeds your balance. Chime has no monthly minimum balance or overdraft fees up to $200, plus, they have access to over 60,000 fee-free ATMs that can be found in the Chime app. Plus you can pay friends through Chime no matter what bank they use and cash out your money fee-free. Your credit's a big deal, so build yours up with Chime. Just open a Chime checking account with a $200 plus qualified direct deposit to get started. Get started at chime.com slash ear. That's chime.com slash ear. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by Stride Bank NA, member FDIC. Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply. Out of network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. On time payment history may have a positive impact on your credit score. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. Ear Biscuits is supported by Rosetta Stone. I don't know what you're into. Uh, I like to travel. I like to travel to places. I'm uh, into languages, even if I don't travel. Where people may or may not speak uh, the language that I speak, which uh, is pretty much English. Uh, and really? that's why I am very into the idea of learning a new language. If you're into it too, check it out. Rosetta Stone is the most trusted language learning program available on desktop or as an app, and it truly immerses you in the language you wanna learn. Rosetta Stone has been using trusted experts for 30 years with millions of users and 25 languages offered, including, but not limited to, Spanish, French, Italian, German, Korean, and Chinese. And immerses and it immerses you in many ways, designed for long-term retention, so you really learn to speak, listen, and think in that language. Plus, it has a built-in true accent feature and gives you feedback on your pronunciation so you sound more fluent. That's cool, and it's an amazing value. The Lifetime membership has all 25 languages for any and all trips and language needs in your life. Don't put off learning that language. There's no better time than right now to get started. For a very limited time, you can get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership for 40% off. That's $179 for unlimited access to 25 language courses for the rest of your life. Redeem your 40% off at rosettastone.com slash ear today. You wanna go with fictional duos now? Yeah. Okay. Starting with uh, Frodo and Sam. Yeah. They're not real. A lot of times you say Sam and Frodo. Is it, it's always Frodo and Sam, I guess. I mean, F Frodo, uh, I, they're great, right? They're so, you know, the, the, the entire trilogy, like their story is just so moving. Oh, it's great. And, it's, so, and it, they're inseparable even though like Frodo was tasked with the thing, like Frodo had his connection to Gandalf and like every, you know, he had to bear the weight, but not really. Cause he Sam was like. He couldn't have done it without Sam. He couldn't have done it without Sam 100%. And that was the story. That was what was being explored. But points against them okay. as a duo is the fact that it was Frodo that was tasked with something as an individual. It wasn't like they were both trying to get to White Castle. Exactly, and it, we're, we're about to get to a, fict, a fictitious duo that I think, uh, for reasons that I've got, is gonna be, it's gonna be very difficult for them to not be the best fictitious duo. I, I disagree for, for, with your point, though. Okay. Because. But if one person is tasked with it and the other person is essential to accomplishing it, that's great. 
But it's not the same as both of them being tasked with them, I or would both argue, of them making the decision. I would argue that it. Gandalf did give Sam the task okay. of accompanying Frodo. Okay. Okay. But only one person could possess the ring. I, what I'm getting at is if it was like a double ring situation. <laughs> Okay. Then it, like brass knuckles? Yeah, if it was like two little brass knuckles That's, and they had to stay side by side the whole yeah. time, then it would be like, this is a great duo. They, yeah, that would be awesome. And they that, both disappear at the same time. That was my biggest criticism of Lord of the Rings was that it wasn't brass knuckles. <laughs> this is actually an interesting thing to bring up as we have developed things, um, scripted things, you know, we've done a bunch of scripted things and we obviously write every single thing from that's got us in it from the perspective of a a duo. And when you read any sort of screenwriting book, they basically talk about how you have to pick your protagonist and that's traditionally that's one person. Uh -huh. And so the real problem is being what noise did I just make? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You, I you made the screenwriting noise. I, I tried to say uh-huh, but it came out uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wasn't going to say anything, <laughs> but you did. Oh, no. So it becomes difficult. Well, the main mistake that amateur screenwriters make, like and, us, let, let me, and we were much, we're still amateurs, but we were much more amateurs, you know, 15 years ago, was that you basically just distill the duo down to one character who is the protagonist, and you realize that, oh, this could just be one person doing this stuff. Mm hmm. And then we learned, uh, we actually we learned uh, on Buddy System season two. Uh, that I was the protagonist? No, I don't, I don't know what you're about to no, say. No, no, we, we learned that every buddy comedy is a romantic comedy. Oh, yes. Yeah, right? yeah, it's, it's, it's of that form. Yeah, and so. The you, things that you wanna see in there a romantic is no, relationship, there is a, there is a, um, a parallelism, and that's one of the reasons that we set it up in 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 season two was like this is not two guys that have to do something yeah, together, not hip to hip kind of. A it thing. was like no, we didn't problem. even know each other at the beginning, and now we have to do this, and we so there would be this interaction between the two characters because the the oscillation of connection and conflict between two characters is what makes an interesting story, and, and they we, we don't have it right. down. Yet, and we don't do a lot of scripted stuff, but yeah, like we but, had to learn that lesson. Well, and we so we structured the motive of each character to be different. Like my parallel universe character wanted to become a robot, just to have such a simple life that was just programmatic and yeah. totally secure, like driven by security and org organization. Like we were saying, the categorization. Earlier. They had to want different things, and then, but also kind of want the same. Your thing. character wanted what? Uh, Comfort. I, well, and I specifically was trying to achieve. Tran, uh, tra I was trying to transcend. Transcend the seven seals of satisfaction. Yeah, trying to find the seventh seal. But what the audience wanted was for them to be friends. Connection. For them to be buddies forever. Yeah, and. So that that's what we were toying with. That's what we were hoping to make it compelling. Uh, you should go back and watch it. It's it's free on YouTube. Buddy System Season Two. You can watch it in one sitting. But Sam enter, and Frodo. Oh, there's su such a sweet relationship. And, uh, and obviously, in terms of the story that they're contextualizing, one of my favorite stories of all time. Mm -hmm. But I actually think that Wayne and Garth are a better duo. Okay, okay. Uh, and again, I'm not like a huge Wayne and Garth fan in terms of we did accidentally watch the first movie. Yeah, because how did that happen? We were watching. Uh, we were hanging out watching the 1950 something comeback or 1960 something comeback special from Elvis. Right. And, and then, then it when just it automatically started playing. It, it was, was like 1 a.m. and we were like, are we gonna do this? And everybody looked around and we just, but then we watched the whole movie. <laughs> but we concluded that it held up. Oh yeah. And this is why I think that Wayne and Garth are the so far the best fictitious duo. We'll see if they get usurped. They are so essential to one another. They're, so, they're very different. They're, this, they're the same in a certain way, but they're very different in a certain way. 
And there are, they uh, fall into these roles that are so complimentary. And like, they both, I mean, we're always trying to make sure that there's a there's an even balance between us with the stuff that we're in, in terms of like where the comedy is coming from. Yeah. And like, who's getting this joke in or whatever. But that's how these it's guys, yeah, these guys come even. across. And then you might, now, people have favorites to be like, I just think that everything that Garth does is so funny if you're a Garth guy. And people be like, but, and Wayne is kind of, it's his show, right? And uh, Garth yeah. is Garth is like the sidekick on the show, in, on their basement show. In their setup, there's a, there's like this is Wayne show and Garth is the sidekick. But in but the in presentation the, right. of the comedy, they are Wayne and Garth, and, yes. they're, and they're bringing equal parts funny and interest. And it'll all, and it'll be about like, well, you know, Wayne is the one that is. I don't even remember the. I don't remember who was trying to get Tia. What's her name? It was Gar. It was Wayne. I think it was Wayne. Yeah, but like they're both. They both got challenges that they're trying to. You're, like you're pulling for both of them. There, there's a bigger goal, but I don't know. I'm just saying that I think the complementary nature. And you don't. You don't think they didn't do anything on their own. They they existed right. as a duo in their fictitious right. world. And when you see them separately, you're missing the other half, and that's kind of like that. That's the. That's the point. Nobody dresses up as just Garth for Halloween. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, uh, you could. Well, and you'd be a very. Well, we both dressed up as Wayne for Halloween on Wayne and, one year. Wayne that was the Wayne. joke. We've, we've done a lot of like Robin and Robin. Way, right. You know, Wayne and Wayne. <laughs> but um, yeah, but you could go, so you could go as Frodo. And, and no, I don't you think could. anybody would be like, where's Sam? Oh. They would. They but. also would be like, which hobbit are you? Because, <laughs> right. you know, they all got to look the same. And they coined a bunch of catchphrases. Party on. That's what she said? They made that popular, huh? Hell yeah. Swing. I mean, so, yeah, we gotta, we've got a heavy identification with Wayne and Garth, so. All right, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with that. Thelma and Louise, I'm gonna throw that out there. Give the ladies some love. You got, you definitely got that ampersand in there. Thelma and Louise, you don't think, when you hear Thelma and Louise. I mean, I. Uh, Spoiler alert. I, I, for one, have seen this movie. Have you? I don't like to see movies where cars go off cliffs. Hey, spoiler. I said, I did, I already said that. Um, There is an event where you can go, I know this is a tangent, I'm sorry, but like, I think this is the TikTok thing. You can, the, the, you can show up somewhere, and then the uh, like automobiles are driven off a cliff, and then they like come down the side of the mountain in front of all the spectators. That's where's a, this? That's a cool little day. I don't know. I could look. That would up. be pretty cool to watch. Watch cars go off a cliff event. Um. The Glacier View car launch has become a 4th of July tradition in the picturesque wilderness east of Palmer, Alaska. Launching cars off a 300 foot cliff. Yeah. How many cars can do they do this with? I don't know, but I don't think that people are in it. 13 cars. Yeah, and look at, here's one of them with a van pulling like an RV. 300 feet, started in the 2000s when someone hit a moose and needed to dispose of the wrecked vehicle. That someone had imagination, it was all downhill from there. <laughs> I mean, what's at the bottom of this cliff? Just a bunch of cars, or do they remove them? Um, well, you know, they love nature in Alaska. So it goes without saying that when the party is over at, what's left of the vehicles is taken to be recycled. Oh, are you reading now or are you just saying things? That's just how I talk. Okay. No Alaskans are harmed in the making of the videos associated with it. This Except the fun. guy that moves in after car number 12 to start the cleanup process. That guy could get injured. I, I think maybe we should go to this. I'm down. At the bottom of the cliff with my camera. I love the fact that there's a Facebook ad in this article for the retirement home 
of the town where this happens. Oh, does it look nice? If you are attending the Glacier View 4th of July car launch, look for our van that the residents hadn't so much fun decorating. Well, I mean, if <laughs> you, you got to retire somewhere, I, I assume, assuming they let you out, if you want to go look at the car, I mean, when I retire, I want to retire next to some exciting stuff. You know what I mean? That's exciting I do, stuff. I do know what you mean. I, that's why I told you about it. It's exciting. So that's Thelma and Louise. Pretty so, iconic. The fact that they, they die together. The f they die together makes them up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you want to die together? No. I uh, I, mean, I want to live longer than you. You're going to die first, so well, if we that die, kind of cut if we my die, life short. If we die of natural causes, it, I am more likely to die. I'm a little bit older and I'm taller. But um, what are the chances that we would, and I know we've had this conversation before, but. Let's have it again, man. What? Maybe it'll be different this time. I do think that um, given what we do. We're together a lot, yes. It is, it no, is and I'm not, like And that. I'm not just talking about the stuff we do on the show. I'm saying now that we're doing this college trip every summer. It would be iconic for us to die together. We're, no, we're, I think that would solidify our iconic. We're more likely to die, die together. If we die of an accident, Yeah, more likely to die, to die, die together. So, do you want to? If we're gonna die at the same time, I want it to be the same place. So I'll put it to you that way. Okay. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Uh, throw out another one. Who who are, who are you thinking? Uh, Woody and Buzz Lightyear. Well, just for consideration. So the first movie was all about them becoming friends. But then there's like, uh, I guess, and then it was like Jesse's involved and. It's not clean. It's not clean. Because they each have their own stories. I mean, right. Buzz Lightyear's got his own. Movie. movie. His own origin. Series. Yeah. It's, this is kind of the same thing for Shrek and Donkey. You know, the movie's called Shrek, not Shrek and Donkey. Yeah. If it were called that, so I, I think they're friends, but I wouldn't even call Shrek and Donkey a, a duo. I wouldn't call Woody and Buzz a duo. They're well, just friends. Yeah, but here's the thing about but the when they're around, Woody and Buzz. There's and an ensemble. Cast. Shrek and Donkey, though. Shrek and Donkey. You know, Shrek is Shrek. Donkey's a sidekick. Woody and Buzz Lightyear. No, there's no, there's no, not any sidekick energy from either one of them. Yeah, that's true. There's like very much like mm. main character energy from both of them, which yeah. which I think it makes a great duo, right? That's kind of what I was saying about. Yep, those are the best. Wayne and Garth, and but they're almost so main character energy that they supersede a duo. It's just two guys. In I this ensemble. Yeah. If I see one, I'm not necessarily missing the other. I don't. They don't complete each other. You don't. You in don't, the way that Wayne and Garth did. They don't. Okay. As toys, you would not buy Woody and Buzz as a set. Nope. There you go. But if you bought Wayne and Garth toys, most likely it would they would be together in a set. If you yeah. if you go down the, the yeah. aisle at Walmart, if they were to sell such a thing, right? Shrek and Donkey. You're gonna see Shrek on a T-shirt. I mean, if you got a donkey only t shirt, it's pretty much. I'm sure there is. That's the joke, is that you have a donkey only t shirt. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love them together. The Mario and Luigi. Brothers and an ampersand. I mean, we could talk for days about Luigi's Luigi ness. You know yep. what I'm saying? He started off just being the green second version of Mario. Right, player number two. Yeah. Now, yeah. in the first Super Mario. Then he started, in the second one, he started jumping and wiggling his feet, and he was like, oh, he's got, he's he's doing got his different. own thing. He's taller. He's, you know, and sometimes with a duo, and this is our case, it take, it, you know, one, one guy's a little bit of a late bloomer. I was a little bit of a late bloomer in this duo. <laughs> okay. Right? So you started like, twiddling your feet. So yeah, I started twiddling my feet a little bit. I had to play a little catch up. Well, in Super Mario Two, in Super Mario One, there's n n absolutely no difference other than just the color of the overalls. Mm -hmm. And but Super Mario Two was it easier to win as one of the one of the other? 
he, Luigi, it sucked to play as Luigi. It was hard to win as him. He was like, slow, right? He's He would just kind of float on those feet. <laughs> I mean, at least Princess would like jump in the air and then beeline straight. And Toad was, he's strong as hell, man. Toad was a little beast. You won with Toad? Oh, I, but Toad was my pick because he got a ri he would rip those turnips out of the ground like a like a big boy. I mean, the the quickness that Toad would yank a turnip is the only reason I ever tried to get fit. Like thinking about Toad. Well, you, you need better. Don't motivation. look. What are you looking at? You need better motivation. <laughs> you looking at my body? Uh, you have a to have a toad like body. <laughs> I, I, I have a Luigi like body. I am long and lanky, but I want to have a toad like. I want to. I want to be able to rip it like Toad, man. Um, you oh, you you got something buried in the ground? <laughs> Call Toad. You really like Super Mario Two. It was it was a it was a big leap from Super Mario Brothers. I mean. It was amazing. Did you ever beat the first one? No. But you beat the second one? No. You love these games so much. I mean. Super Mario 3? I didn't have two. I got three and I beat three. I didn't beat that either. Dude, I never beat anything. But one was like easy to beat with warp zones? I could beat one in like uh, 19 minutes. Yeah, but then you get to the end and there's like a maze. Uh, yeah, I think I could probably still remember how to do it. I think you start high, then go middle, then go low. Okay. And then you're through, and then you just- Now you're rubbing it in. Run under Bowser. And I had all the Nintendo powers. I really enjoyed reading those. I like <laughs> knowing that I could know. Okay, but Mario and Luigi definitely not a great duo because too Luigi just too repetitive. so much short shrift yeah. in the fluttering feet thing. I mean, what about Rick and Morty? I They got a strong ampersand. They're always together. They're hilarious. And they're a very unique duo. It's not a healthy relationship. <laughs> not at all. I mean, but it's a grandpa, grandson. That's very fresh. It's not a healthy relationship. It, no, it's not. So I don't think you can. It's I, hilarious. I think the, unhealthy. So if you go back to Sam and Frodo, it's or sweet. Wayne and Garth. Yeah, they yeah. need each other, right? Yeah. Rick and Morty is an example of a unrelentingly toxic, a toxic relationship. <laughs> so, is there ever a sweet moment? I, I think for comedy, probably. If it begins to be sweet, then it is, it is immediately made unsweet for comedy. It was sweet right. for comedy, and then it's made unsweet for comedy. So I had to mention them. Uh, that's the only ones on in this category. What are we? So are we sticking with? Yes, Wayne and Garth. You, you, yes. I mean, I think Wayne and Garth <laughs> is the it's a best fictitious duo, and I'm, I'm I'm willing to be talked out of that. But so far, best musical duo, Everly Brothers. Best fictitious, Wayne and Garth. Let's move to historical. Yeah, but I don't want to take too long because I want to get to comedy duos. Yes, we don't Let's have a quick. lot. We don't know much. Story. We don't know much about history. I mean, Bonnie and Clyde. The only thing I know about Bonnie and Clyde is that Merle Haggard wrote a song called "The Legend of Bonnie and Clyde." Well, I'll also say originally you put Bonnie and Clyde in the fi fictitious category, so you very you know very I, little about no, them. No, that. I, I oh put, no! You put Butch Cassidy in as kid. That's right. Okay. Yeah, I'm not that's an idiot. Ne that's next. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't know much about Bonnie and Clyde. Well, Bonnie was a waitress in a small cafe. Clyde Barrow was the rambler who took her away. Yeah. They both robbed and killed until both of them died. So goes the legend of Bonnie and Clyde. I think the fact that if the thing that the duo is known for is bad things, that's cool. I just feel like. We can't put you too high in the list. You know what I mean? If if so, if you have a toxic relationship, they killed thirteen people. You're going to go down in the list. But if you're doing toxic things like killing thirteen people, you're going to go down in the list. Yeah, but it's and and they had a romantic thing going on, so they were also a couple. That muddies the waters. Yeah, yeah it makes it complicated. Yeah, yeah, but they died together. Don't shit where you eat. Okay. I don't know if it's applicable to that, but it sounded right. <laughs> <laughs> don't screw your friends, because <laughs> then that something more happens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And now we go back to the fictional world of Butch Cassidy <laughs> and the Sundance Kid. Yeah. So they were real. I mean, we have this picture of Robert Redford and um, well, crap. What's his name? Paul Newman. Paul Newman. Oh yeah, how could I? 
How could I forget the guy from the dressing yeah, label? Newman's Own. Great movie, right? You have seen it. I have movie. seen it. E excellent movie. Excellent I mean, movie. It's no tombstone, but it's a great western. It's, a, it's, an, it's an era thing, you know? Um, it's also not as good as like um, the good, the bad, the ugly, which is just about a vibe and a style. That's a little long and a little boring. But so Butch Cassidy and I the Sundance Kid that. is it's better than that. Excellent acting from both of them. Very funny, just endearing. Endearing, yeah. And uh, I love hanging out with these guys. And again, but we our interpretation of them is through a cinematic representation of them. Yeah, so we're so kind of. What, so what do we know? What do we really kind of? I, well, I don't know anything. But I, we do know that when we were in Colorado recently on the Upper Animus River and we were on the train going up, the guide who was riding in the train next to me said, that bridge right there is the bridge that Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid jumped off in the movie. And I was like, okay. What do you mean in the, okay, so it was a scene in the movie? Yeah. This wasn't the real life people jumping off of this bridge. I think that's what he was trying to say. I also kind of thought, really? You know what I mean? Sometimes you just... And spoiler alert, they they die together too, right? Yes, but they really die together. It says a shootout in Bolivia. Dude, don't you know the movie? They go to Bolivia, man. I don't remember. You don't see it happen. It's so, it's like they come out guns a blazing and then it's just like you hear what's happening but you don't see So it. they die together, they, have, the they have cool names. Butch Cassidy, if you hear that, what are you gonna say? And the Sundance uh, yeah, Kid, you're right. gonna put it together. There's, the, there's Iconic a lot to actors like about that. playing them. Who else are we throwing out the, there? Uh, the Wright Brothers. Okay. Orville and Wilbur Wright, they, they work together to invent a flying machine. They brought different things to the table. Did they? Um, yeah, Wilbur was athletic in his youth, very well read, a gifted speaker, and outgoing. Uh, Orville was impulsive, optimistic, and contemplative, very interested in science and technology. Okay. Um, but they did something great together. They were brothers. I, I consider that a demerit. Because it's, yeah, you know, they didn't, they didn't make a choice. I, I, I agree right. with that. Yeah. But, so, they, but they invented something that transformed the world. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Are they are they better than? They're better than the other two we mentioned. Yeah, they're they're the best historical duo so far. And what about and they and they did it in North Carolina. What about Lewis and Ohio. Clark? Lewis and Clark, they were put together by the president at the time. Can't remember which one. And it's I remember when I was a kid, I was reading the Adventures of Lewis and Clark, and I just cried like a baby when it ended. Well, it it ends badly. It's pretty epic for one of them. Pretty epic. I mean, but they they were put together for this adventure and then they went their separate ways. Yeah. Um, they did something together and then they parted ways. Yeah, so they were just kind of, so they weren't inseparable. They were put together and then they separated. What about Adam and Eve? <laughs> yeah, interesting, you put, the, put Adam and Eve in the historical uh, duo category. Well. Because they're lovers, that's the only reason. That's the only reason I question it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're not here to Adam and Eve. Not that, here to I mean, that's anyone. quite quite a duo. We wouldn't be here without them, Link. We would, if you said Adam, what are you going to say? And Eve. Every everybody knows about Adam and Eve. Whether so, it's just a question. Yeah, they didn't actually exist though. But let's just <laughs> okay. Let's for a moment. So we're going to give them the well. Let's just consider for a moment. Let's compare. Let's let's just for the sake of this argument, let's say that they are historical. Okay, uh, as you might guess, I have many reasons to believe almost with complete confidence that they are not. <laughs> However, um, they didn't do good things for us, bro. The whole point of the story is that they screwed it up for everybody. Yeah. Uh, the, the Wright brothers, on the other hand, are like bringing planes. And then yeah. Adam and Eve are ruining it for everyone, and bringing sin upon the world, destruction and death. Plus, we played the Wright brothers in Epic Rap Battles of History. We did. We did. We also played Lewis and Clark. We did. We did. 
But the Wright brothers was 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 a more iconic one because we were up against the Mario brothers, and we beat them. I'm sure there's other iconic uh, historical duos that we we're going to go with out, the Wright but brothers. Wright brothers are are winning in our mind. Let's move on to comedy duos. Comedy duos. Now, Jamie, first one you put up here was Abbott and Costello. Yes, which, which I know. I've certainly heard of Abbott and Costello, and if you say Abbott, I'm going to say. And Costello. Yeah. Or they, maybe Kenny. What? Is that his? What? South? Oh, the, the street Abbott in Kenny. Venice? Oh. <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> Abbott and Costello. Costello. Now, they did the who's on first bit. So we do know that. I can't, but I've never, I've never watched Abbott and Costello. You know, it's too well, black you, and white for me. You haven't, you haven't chosen to. You probably have. You've seen that bit, you know, represented in some sort of documentary about the history of comedy or something on CNN. To be an iconic comedy duo, even if no one has ever seen you, they've still heard of you, and they've heard of your bit. You know? Yeah. It that's powerful. Well, that's powerful. Very interesting tidbit about these guys. Costello used to fake his voice. As their pair started out, as the pair started out on the radio, and okay. their voices were too similar for people to tell them apart. Huh? He faked his voice to make them sound more alike, or he fixed it by faking his voice. Uh, well, based on what I just said, I think he made it different so that their okay. voices sounded too similar. So because their voices sounded too similar. Oh, okay. So it's to differentiate. If all you got is your voice on the radio, so. I mean, I think people can. I think people can easily tell our voices apart, even though on the spectrum of all people's voices, we would be probably put in the same category. Like, if there are like yeah. ten categories of voices, yeah, and we'd be in the same category. But there's enough. Our inflection is the same. You know, to go back to the music of it all, and and you know, they talk about there's a thing called blood harmony, where it's when you're brothers or when you're related you're able to have this close harmony that just like completely blends. And it's a combination of what some people would say is genetics and upbringing. But we're able to have that because we've shared so much life and conversations that we yeah. talk the same, we say words the yeah. same. Most of it comes from pronunciation like, of words. We say the word unique the same way, unique. Yeah, so it doesn't take any Unique. effort. It doesn't take any effort to sing uh, in to match to, to match that or in harmony. Yeah, like the in, the intonation, expression. Also interesting about these guys. I mean, who cares too much, right? But <laughs> right, uh, <laughs> Costello believed he was the main reason for their success, so they split income sixty forty. Oh shit! That's a that's dicey. Yeah, mm mm. That's dicey. Yeah, yeah. That's not. I don't like that. I don't like that. One of them asserting like a 10% edge. What? A 20% edge. Well, 20% net. Yeah. I guess that is the way to say it. Uh, so, all right, they're disqualified. Disqualified because of that. Key and Peel. You know Key and Peel. Now, oh man. Such an amazing sketch show. When it comes to comedy duos, like they were in every sketch together and you were always looking forward to what each of them was gonna do. And they each did different things they well. Even when yeah. they, like the type of characters that they could really play, it, you would, even if you use the same adjectives to describe both characters, like over the top, the way that they were over the top, it's like they would take the same thing but still be very different and complementary. And so, because you have to, because they're always interacting with each other. The fact that they could create sketch after sketch after sketch and have this dynamic interaction that you never got tired of mm -hmm. is, I mean, and they weren't like, Alan Costello, I think we're just playing the characters that they developed. And it's like what we do on Good Mythical Morning. We're we're embodying the caricatured versions of ourselves right. day in day out and living that. They would reinvent themselves from the ground up for every single sketch. Yeah, and then they rarely see, did sequels. I mean, so if you just think about that, 
the fact that they were able to form combination after combination. It's like they created iconic fictional comedy duos like a factory. I mean, because you, you, if you throw out like Will Ferrell and John C. Riley, they got a handful of movies that are iconic and amazing. And I mean, they're a great duo, but you, you know, they're also not a duo. They're not. Yeah, they do a whole you know, lot on but, their own. So th they did what Will Ferrell and John C. Riley did in you know a handful of movies. They did that again and again and again, episode after episode. But multiple seasons. Okay. Well, I can go. It goes without saying that in terms of the comedic output, the, the how much it makes me laugh of anything that's on the list is like most consistently, Key and Peele is gonna is gonna win. So in terms yeah, of what they it, made to caliber, yes caliber but let's talk about the demerits okay they did it for a certain amount of time mm -hmm. and at this point it's over right at this point it's over oh well, yeah uh they they each had the thing that they they wanted to do and you know they're both incredibly talented they broke up and they're thriving as individuals yeah um in separate ways and like in jordan's case like in a way that Unless you knew them well, you would not have known he was sitting on like this, like w one of the best filmmakers of our time. Yeah, <laughs> you and, know, you would. So now that's his identity. It's eclipsed. I mean, you can you can almost forget about Key and Peele when your starting point is Monkey Paw movies. And so, if what you are doing. If what one person is doing is beginning to eclipse what the duo did together, that's a demerit, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you, What do you want me to tell you, Tim and Eric? <laughs> um, you know, Tim Much and Eric. Much respect to Tim and Eric for forging a a tone of comedy. It, they basically that is just bewildering. Tone, yeah. I mean to to. Yeah, to just, to be so distinct in terms of a brand. But they do stuff separately. I mean, but they, they've done it in a way They don't that, do anything. They do, they do very little together right now. I did see them. Right. I did notice. But you know that we'll come back together. Uh, and, uh, and everyone will be elated. An AP News TikTok that was, you know, occasionally during the strike, they'll have an actor out on the picket line kind of talking or whatever. Like ripping a CEO a new one? And it was Tim and Eric, and they were talking like the protesters, and they were legitimately protesting, but doing it in a very Tim and Eric way they were together. on a the AP News. Oh, yes. And it was just... I love it. It was great. It was... They were talking about... They had this bit about AI, and they were saying, A, A, I think this. <laughs> like they were saying A and then I. <laughs> and it was it just struck me as so silly. So dumb. Uh yeah, but you I don't question exactly. If, even if you didn't tell me that, I don't question that there's they're still a duo even though they're not doing things right now. They did that. And I I and I know that they will I just believe. Well, Tim has his they'll keep doing Tim kind of has his for lack of a better word, digital presence, right? And in, in the in the office hour stuff that he does that pops up in my TikTok feed. Yeah. And then Eric is doing more of the like traditional acting stuff. He'll pop up and oh, he's on this show. Oh, he's on that movie. Right. You no, know, Tim will do that too. Tim was in um, Us. Yeah. Jordan Peele. But I, I, I it, mean, I, I'm not going to put him above Key and Peele. No, I don't think you can. I don't think you can. Uh, going back, black and white, Laurel and Hardy. I just. You know, I'm sure that if I, we were I think trying to like quantify the way that these guys contributed to the history of comedy, we would probably give it to them. But, but like, we, we just do don't that. know anything. I, I mean, I know what they look like, and I've like can see some sketches. But I'm not one of those. That's everybody we got. Neither one of us is the kind of person that goes back to watch stuff that's supposed to like influ influence. Like when you're learning about some. Uh, scientific concept or whatever. There's a certain type of person that's like, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna read everything that led up to this point so I fully understand it in context. 
Okay. And there are people that do that with entertainment. They're like, well, you know, the only reason that Tarantino makes movies the way that he does is because of this filmmaker and this filmmaker. Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that I know that we should probably be educated in this way, but neither one of us is neither we don't know anything about hey, this stuff. Don't don't take an apologetic. Talk. So no, so what I'm telling you oh. is that th this is I'm not saying this is the defense. I don't give a shit about black and white. So you think if something is in black and white, it's bad. If it's not in widescreen, I won't watch it. Well, if it's not in 4K, it's not for me. As I told you last year <laughs> or the year before, I had this- Our show's not in 4K, by the way. <laughs> I had this judgmental tone about- It will be soon. We're working on it, hopefully. I had this judgmental tone about- uh, It's a Wonderful Life, is that the one? And then, I, and then I finally did actually watch it. Okay. And it was very I'm, good. It's and three so, hours long, though. What do you? What else do you have to do? Everything, categorize stuff. I mean, this is coming from a guy who watches every episode of Survivor, and you're complaining about the time that you have. Well, not in one sitting. <laughs> well, divide it up, man. Dude, we don't have any other comedy duos. I think I'm gonna have to give it to us. Ooh. I mean, I don't care. I'll do it. Okay. Well, I didn't know we were in the category. Now, if you just search comedy duo, do are we even in the conversation? Double act, oh, Wikipedia, Wikipedia is the first thing that comes up, and Laurel. Laurel and Hardy is the picture. But I'm just gonna do a little search to see. Oh, modern day YouTube channels follow this format. Okay, well the paragraph, it, well it says, some examples include Smosh, Dan and Phil, The Game Grumps, and Rhett and Link of the YouTube channel, Good Mythical Morning. But we're mentioned 12 times, oh, two, two times. One out of two is what I've, okay, I thought what's I the said. second time we're mentioned? In a list. In a list at the bottom. Um, okay. Before us, it says Key and, P Key and Peel had a show on Comedy Central. So we are the last thing mentioned in 90s to present day comedy duo. Oh, we're the last great comedy duo, Link. <laughs> we, no, we are the most recently mentioned comedy duo on the Wikipedia double act entry. I'll take it. If you exclude well, and the heading is history. Yeah, history. That, that's kind of cool. Hey, okay, then I think we I think we can give it to we can give it to ourselves. <laughs> can we Listen, give... obviously we're not making sketches and never have made sketches as funny as Key and Pill, but hey, we're still doing it. We're still together. I yeah. Okay. Should we should we argue could we argue for ourselves a little bit more? Yeah, like I mean, coming up on forty years of friendship. Build it, yep. build an entire. Uh, let's not do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it, it, this is the kind of thing you let other people say about you. you yeah, know? I mean, you yeah. probably shouldn't even have brought it. Let's up. edit. Let's edit out all of our self aggrandizement. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're not the best comedy duo of all time. And by edit out, I mean leave it in, but also leave what I'm saying right now in. Uh, you know how this goes. <laughs> so we're giving it to. We're giving it to us. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I'm giving it to Key and Pill. We're YouTubers, man. We're not comedians. All right. Um, some honorable mentions in the other category. Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. Yeah, right. Um, Great duo. Th there is an and there, not an ampersand. Uh, it's hard to mention one without the other. And it's cool that they've made their first appearance in entertainment as one person. Right. They are sisters. I mean, how often does that happen? Uh, they are twins. So two demerits, but the fact that they're no, and then they now they have another sister who's more famous than them. But they all those VHS sales, boy, they are they're they're just riding high. Jamie, I noticed that you Do they live together. You didn't include the Island Boys on this uh, on this. Yeah, list. what's up with that? Oh, the Island. Well, the Island Boys. <laughs> it's not too late. It's not too late. They're very I mean, pretty. Like, are they still big? Like, do people oh, still huge. even talk about they're them? They're awesome. We love them. Really? I don't know anything about them, but I love them. Okay. Well, you very should probably take. Okay. Oh. So, so just, just, just a word to the wise. You know, if you don't know anything about someone, don't say, you don't love say, them. I love. Them. I, I am against everything that you they, don't have to say that, that I should be against. Have they been? They're bad people. I don't. I don't know. I was just joking. I don't know anything about them, but I, I, I just like the word the Island Boys. Sounds cool to me. So you don't, when I say the Island Boys. I have seen a picture of them. So, okay. Face I, tats. I don't and, know anything and, about and, like, them. Big hair. But I'm just saying, just based on the little bit that I have clips here and there that I've seen, I would not say. I was being facetious. I endorse anything I was being about facetious. the Island Boys. God. Man. See, 
if, if have, Eric should Wareheim have him, should have brought him up. was my comedic partner, he would have taken that and ran with it. <laughs> he would have loved him too, yeah. facetiously. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Penn and Teller. Well, one of them doesn't talk. But, but he, he does now. He does weight. now, though. Oh, he does? He does on, the, he does on their, their Fool Me show. He talks now. Pretty sure. They've, they have longevity. They, they're magicians. That's a demerit. <laughs> they're the best magician duo. Easily. Well, hold on. Yeah, think about it. <laughs> Let's not get hasty here. <laughs> I mean, if I search. Well, oh, name another magician. magician because those tiger duo. guys were not magicians, were they? Wikipedia has a magician duos. Barry and Stewart. Okay. The Davenport. Siegfried and Roy. Siegfried and Roy. That is Tiger hands. That ended ended badly. Yeah, there's no one I recognize here except for Siegfried and Roy. What happened to them? Well, one of them got attacked by a tiger. Go figure. Uh, they both died in the past three years. But not together. And that was a missed opportunity. Penn and, Teller, Penn and Teller gets mad props from us. They've had multiple shows. I, I would like to see their uh, Vegas show, but like television show, bullshit. It was fun. Uh, very distinct and complimentary personalities. It works. No need for tigers. If a tiger is your prop, you're not a duo anymore. You know? All right, let me give you this. Hanna Barbera. This is a duo. I wouldn't even know they were a they, duo. They don't right because I just thought it was a person named Hanna Barbera. No, it's two people. William Hanna and Joe Barbera are Again, I know, you know something about this. They invented Tom and Jerry, Yogi Bear, the Jetsons, the Flintstones. Okay, there's yeah. a lot there's a lot Animators. of love here. Scooby Doo, Johnny Quest. All right. Trixie Mattel and Katya. Did I say that right? Yes. Okay. They have a very, very popular podcast. They're hilarious together. Okay, that's Jamie's entry. That is mine. <laughs> that's your favorite duo? Uh, maybe not out duo of- Duo of all time. Not of all time. <laughs> okay. Th those, and, and I guess uh, Tenacious D, Silent Bob, and Jay, otherwise known as Jay and Silent Bob. We'll just throw them out there, but I'm given the, I'm given the miscellaneous category. Penn and Teller have swept away with it. Okay, all right, so here we go. The definitive uh, determination of the best duos by category by this duo, Red Link. By this duo. The most recently named duo in the history section of duos on Wikipedia. Let's put that on a t-shirt. I mean, it is. It, it's so easy to change. It's a bragging right, <laughs> right? Yeah, by the time this comes out, it'll be changed. Um, for my rec, I'm gonna go back to a music rec, uh, you gave a good music rec last week. And since we already talked about Outkast and we're talking about duos, like I'm going to recommend that you listen to their 1998 album, Aquemini. Aquemini is a Aquarius and a Gemini running shit. Mm. Cause one of them's, you know, Aquarius and one of them's a Gemini. And then that song, like if you're gonna listen to a song, listen to Aquemini. And because mm. it it explores their their the duality of their duo. So we would be Labrimini. It's a it's a great it's a great song. We should it, release an album called Labrimini. Labrimini. I like that. It sounds like a like a like a novel. Labrim and I. <laughs> My summer with Labrim. <laughs> You got anything else to say about that? You can edit. Or now you're just so. texting. I, I was, I, I was just gonna read a, a little bit from that. Yeah, even the sun goes down, heroes eventually die. Horoscopes often lie, and sometimes why? Aquemini. Nothing is for sure. Nothing is for certain, and nothing lasts forever. But until they close the curtain, it's him and I. Aquemini. Aquemini. They wrote a song about their friendship. Oh, well, that's great. It's awesome, you know? Yeah. Shout out to Daddy Fat Sax and Three Stacks. Listen to it. <laughs> <laughs>
Do you, how do you feel about our list? Do you disagree? Do you agree? Do you have comments? Well, let us know at one eight 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 earpod one. And of course, use the hashtag earbiscuits wherever to communicate with us. Love you. Hi, Ren Link. I just want to call in because I heard you guys talking about places you want to visit on the new episode of Ear Biscuits, and there's been a lot of conversation about caves. And then when I heard you guys get to concerts, I had to stop listening and immediately call you because there is a concert venue in Tennessee called The Caverns, where it is actually a cave that they have concerts in. So this might be like the perfect situation for you guys. So I just had to call and let you know. Thanks. Uh, love listening to you guys. Have a good day. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.